For our text today, I want you, if you have your Bibles and want to turn to your Bibles, it's fine. 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 8 through 17, and I'm trying to get used to reading from back here, so y'all, if I stumble a little bit, y'all just say amen, Pastor Barry, go ahead. All right, 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 8 through 17. Oh, before I read, my honey picked that song, I'm sure, for the lineup here, Speak Jesus. She didn't have a clue what I was going to be preaching this morning, okay? But you're going to hear the words of that song over and over again wow. in this message. This is amazing. It blows my mind. Wow. All right. Second Kings chapter 6, verses 8 through 17. Now the king of Aram was at war with Israel. After conferring with his officers, he said, I will set up my camp in such and such place. The man of God, this is Elisha, sent word to the king of Israel, beware of passing that place because the Arameans are going down from there. He okay, got it? The king is getting ready to have war with Israel and Elisha is given a word from God to watch out where they're going to be at. Isn't that cool? So the king of Israel checked on the place indicated by the man of God. Time and again, Elisha warned the king so that he was on his guard in such places. This enraged the king of Aram. He summoned his officers and demanded of them, tell me, which of us is on the side of the king of Israel? None of us, my lord, the king said, one of his officers. But Elisha, the prophet, who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the very words you speak in your bedroom. He says, go find out where he is, the king ordered, so I can send men and capture him. The report came back. He is in Dothan. Then he sent horses and chariots and a strong force there. They went by night and surrounded the city. When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh, no, my Lord. What shall we do? The servant asked. Elisha says, don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hills full of horses, chariots of fire all around Elisha. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you know my heart today, and Lord, I just want to be able to represent you well in the pulpit. I pray, Father God, that you will bless me this morning, anoint me with your holy oil, I pray, dear God. Open up our hearts to your word. Dear God, the reality of this story is awesome. Help us, dear God, to get it. I pray in Jesus' precious and holy name. Put a guard on my lips. I only say those things that will please you and bind the enemy of our soul yes. from us. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 I want to talk to you this morning about being surrounded by the surrounded. That may sound kind of funny, but you'll get it in a few minutes, all right? I want this picture since these horses stay up until we go to our first, uh, first point. I've had many conversations with uh, various Christian brothers and sisters of late. And the people that I have talked with are people of faith. They are mature in their walk with the Lord. So these are not babies in the Lord that I'm talking about, afraid of their own shadow or whatever, but they're mature Christian people. And when discussing the days in which we are living, each one said about the same thing concerning the spiritual atmosphere that seems to be surrounding us all. They said to me, it seems like every day the devil is present as soon as we get out of bed. And some have said, even before I get up, in the middle of the night, the enemy has come and taken sleep from me, trying to bring doubt and fear to our minds. 
or he does something at the very beginning of our day to, to set it off wrong. Maybe you get up in the first thing in the morning and rack your toe against the side of the bed or something. Anything the devil can do to make your day start off bad is what it seems to be going on. And again, folks, these are mature Christian people that have told me this, a number of them, about how they're, 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 just, they're just feeling this atmosphere of evil about us. Now, I have to admit, I've been feeling the same oppression myself. But to hear these other strong Christians to say the same thing has been very alarming. This brings me to my message today. Elisha is a prophet who most of you may know or may not know that took the place of Elijah. God has given Elisha some special intelligence about Israel's enemies, where they camp at, where they plan to attack, what part of the place they got to set an attack up, they got it all set up, and Elisha tells the king of Israel, don't go that way, that's where they're going to be at. The, the, the king of Aram gets so mad that, it, that his plans are being leaked. We hear that word a lot today, don't we? <laughs> being leaked. That he demands to know who's leaking this information. Which of my crew is telling the king of Israel all this stuff about me and where my army is set up? One of his officers says, King, it ain't none of us. But it seems like this prophet Elisha Here's your very words and commands while you're in your bedroom talking. And when you're in your special meeting with your men, Elisha seems to know about that too. And so he's warning the king of Israel about what's going on. Of course, this makes him so aggravated and so mad. He says, see, he sends out men to, to capture Elisha. 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 There you go. They have found him to be in a town called Dothan. The Bible says in our text, and folks, I want you, it seems like when we read the Bible sometimes, we get kind of like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Well, this is real stuff. That's right. This is real fighting armies and so forth. And in that picture, you can see the army that he sends out, that lower army, he, sees, he sends out to capture one man after one man, Elisha. When Elisha's servant, get, they've been, they surrounded Dothan where they're at. And Elisha's servant gets up and goes out for his morning, hello, morning. And he sees this army that's surrounding them. And it freaks him out. And he just becomes so afraid. And he looks out there and he oh my Lord. So he calls for Elisha to come out. And I can just see Elisha coming out, outside too, and he's coming out there, and he gives you a, he gives you a, a good morning, how it's going. How's it going? <laughs> Look! Look what's going on. This is what's going on. Look, we're surrounded by an army of men and chariots and horses. What are we going to do about this? They're here to capture us. Here it comes. Elisha, just as is as calm as the good morning voice said, he says, don't be afraid. There's more with us than is with them. Oh, <laughs> now, can you imagine the reality now? Okay. Servants seen all this. Can you imagine the servant's reaction? Waving his hands over Elijah's eyes and face. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> big army. Us too. <laughs> We're in big trouble. Of course, we know the rest of the story. We read it a few minutes ago. Elisha prays that God will open his eyes. His spiritual eyes. Oh, that's it. That's it. And the servant looks out again. And surrounding this vast army, up on the hill above them, there's chariots and horses of fire 
sent down from God Himself Amen. to surround the surrounded. Amen. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. God has sent down from heaven a force more powerful than any army could ever have. This brings me to my meat of my message this morning. With this picture in mind, we're ready for the next slide here in a minute, Sissy. With this picture in mind, I have a personal question to ask you, and it's to me as well. What army surrounds you this morning? When Elisha's servant saw the army of the king all around him, fear instantly overtook him. All he could see was that the enemy had him both outnumbered and surrounded. There was nowhere to run. There was nowhere to hide. There was no escape. They were surrounded. And so again in panic, he cried to, his, to Elisha, Oh, my Lord, what shall we do? My friends, again, the question is, what army surrounds you this morning? Is it the army of fear and anxiety? Devil has been playing that card for over two years now, hadn't he? Is it the army of fear and anxiety? Is it the army of addiction and slavery? We just sang a few minutes ago, speak the name of Jesus over every addiction. Is it the army of financial bondage? The money that you're making is just not going far enough. Is it the army of health problems? Almost every one of us in here this morning that's got a little bit of age on us. Huh? can name this or that that's going on with your health right now. Maybe a toe ache, maybe a runny nose, but it's still something going on. Isn't that right? Or maybe there's an army of marital problems that's surrounding you. I tell you what, folks, our marriages today are in desperate need of God. There are many, it just amazes me that it's more grandmas and grandpas that have 50 years in some of them that are breaking up. And I'm thinking, what in the world is going on? You can stand here for 50 years, you can stand here for a few more until he (laughs) dies, you know? (laughs) Maybe here's a biggie, and I know many of you can identify with this, is that the army of stress from the workplace Folks, I'm telling you, everybody I talk to, the places I go visit are our chaplaincy places. You hear it over and over and over again. I am so stressed about work. They're asking more of me than I can give. And the more that I give is the more that they ask for. I don't have time for, with my family. I don't have any time for leisure. I don't have any time for nothing. It's work, work, work. That can surround us big time, can't it? Maybe it's an army of indecision. You just don't know which way to go. And that's an awful place to be in. Or maybe it's the army of depression. No oppression. We're just saying, speak the name of Jesus over depression a few minutes ago. Folks, I tell you what. It's amazing to me the number of teenagers that are depressed. <laughs> when I was a teenager, I wasn't depressed about nothing. I had the most wonderful, happy-go-lucky, think about nothing but girls and baseball. <laughs> and most of the time it was that order, girls and then baseball. The switch, there's somewhere in there. But there's so many teenagers today that are walking around in their homes like zombies, getting behind closed doors and drinking and doing dope and all this because they're so depressed about what's going on in our world. If that's not an army, I don't know what an army would be to surround even our young people. 
You see, all these things I just mentioned can throw us into a tailspin. Each of these things that I've mentioned, we feel like that there's no escape to them or there's no way out. That it won't get any better. That's the depression part. Any of these things can drive us into a state of depression. Make us want to crawl in a hole and not come out. Any of these things can bring anxiety. And folks, I know that you can, you can identify with this. I surely can. Any of these things can bring us anxiety in the middle of the night. Waking up to wet sheets from sweating so much. Any of these things can be used by the enemy to steal your joy. To steal our joy. To wreck our day. To make us feel like we are alone and, and no one cares that we're there. Nobody cares I'm going through this today. I'm all by myself. Any of those things can put us in that kind of position. David felt this way when he was hiding in a cave chased by Saul. Jeremiah had to feel this way when he was lowered down into a cistern with no food or drink, all because he prophesied the truth. Job certainly had to feel this way, the, the pain of loneliness, when he said that his very appearance was revolting to others that looked at him. John the Baptist must have felt this when he was alone in his jail cell and questioning his very ministry. Was it in vain or not? And of course, Jesus hung on a cross and felt like even his father had left him alone. The army of the enemy is great. Oh, my dear brothers and sisters, my heart breaks for you. It breaks for me. But I've experienced some of these things myself. Oh, like Elisha, oh Lord, what shall we do? Well, I got one thing you can do. It's the main thing. We can pray that God will open our spiritual eyes Amen. to what's really around us. I cannot imagine what it felt like when God opens the eyes of Elisha's servant. At first glimpse, as I said earlier, all he saw was that he was surrounded. He was doomed. He was outnumbered. He was about to die. Then God gives him spiritual vision. Wow. And folks, I really believe, take a little sidetrack here, I really believe with all of my heart and from reading Scripture that the spirit world is right here. It's right here. Yep. It's right here. Yep. Which means not only are there angels right here and right here and right here, but the enemy also is all around us. And so whatever this is, this, this world, God somehow had uh, the this, uh, this servant's eyes to be open to see spiritual things around him. This miracle of sight enabled him to see beyond the boundaries of the world. The surrounding army is now surrounded. The enemy is overshadowed by the mighty army of God, whose weapons are fire, whose weapons can wipe out any army just by the word of their commanding officer, the God of heaven. He can wipe them away with one word. I would imagine that Elisha's servant immediately felt delivered. The Calvary of God has arrived. And if you'll excuse the expression, he's about to kick tail and take names. The army has arrived. I just wonder if the king's army felt the heat behind them of this great army. Here it is, folks. When you feel like the enemy has you surrounded, pray that God will help you see that your surrounding army is, surrounding, is surrounded by angels. The surrounding army that's about you that we named a few minutes ago is surrounded by angels with swords drawn. 
ready to defend you, ready to deliver you, ready to bring you freedom from whatever army that has you surrounded. This kind of spiritual vision is also beyond the boundaries of this world. This world can only offer us, and I hope this doesn't offend anybody, this world can only offer us medicine and a psychiatrist's couch. This world can only offer temporary relief. But I'm telling you, when the medicine is gone, and when you paid your last dollar to the psychiatrist, the problems of this world will swoop back down on you like a bird of prey on a small animal. However, when our spiritual eyes are open to the help that God gives which transcends mere positive thinking. I'm not talking about positive thinking this morning. I'm talking about power from Almighty God. When that comes upon us, it brings us new hope and it brings us peace. How many times have we sang that this morning about peace? Not only, folks, do we have a spiritual army, and that just, again, that I just love it with those chariots and horses and fire. But folks, I want to get down to where we have God with skin on him. Huh? Yeah. Not only do we have a spiritual army surrounding the army of the devil, but we literally have an army of Christian brothers and sisters standing at our defense. Right. We have all of that at our disposal. Day or night, prayer warriors that are sitting in this church this morning, that we can call on to save us from the enemy's attack. The prayers of these soldiers of God can pray down heaven's power. Please understand this morning, we are not, you are not alone. We are joined by others who have fought many a battle themselves. We are surrounded by an army that is surrounding the army. Amen. 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 In closing, I'd like to share with you some wonderful words from the book of Psalm. This is kind of a long scripture, so bear with us, but it's, I want you to read between the lines, okay, and put yourself in the places of some of this scripture this morning and understand how God cares about you and how he's defending you. Psalm 107, verse 1, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, and His love endures forever. Say five amens. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Let the redeemer of the Lord tell the story. Those He redeemed from the hand of the foe. Those He gathered from the lands, from east and west, from north and from south. And it's talking about the people of God here that's wandering in these desert westlands But I'm telling you what, when we're going through something, sometimes we feel like we're in a desert, aren't we? Some wandered in the desert wastelands, finding no way to the city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. And he delivered them from their distress, and he'll deliver us from our distress. He led them by a straight way to a city where they could settle. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love. I'm reading off my paper here, Sister Adam. And his wonderful deeds for mankind. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good. Good things. Some sit at the darkness. Can I get there? There you go. Some sit at the darkness in utter darkness. Prisoners suffering in iron chains. Because they rebelled against God's commands. And despise the plans of the Most High. Folks, how many times in your life have you rebelled against God? So he subjected them to bitter labor. They stumbled and there was no one to help. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. And he saved them from their distress. What are we talking about this morning? We're talking about being delivered from our troubles when the armies around us and the enemy around us, we're talking about being delivered from our trouble. 
and he saved them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness, the utter darkness, and broke away their chains. I think about whenever I read that word chains, I think about these poor folks, and we know folks that are so addicted to so many things. They're in chains, folks, and they need to be delivered. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. For he breaks down gates of bronze and cuts through bars of iron. Some became fools through their rebellious ways. As I said a few minutes ago, all of us have probably rebelled against God. And we've suffered affliction because of our iniquities and our sin. They loathed all food and drew near the gates of death. Then they cried out. Here it is again. They cried out to the Lord in their trouble. And he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them. And here's that big word. He rescued them from the grave. Folks, this morning, again, I don't know what army is surrounding you. But there's a heavenly army surrounding the surrounding. We also have one another, brothers and sisters in Christ who love us. So we're accompanying them, surrounding them, surrounding the armies, praying for us all the time. And folks, I would just encourage you this morning. Everybody in this church this morning, we're, we're family. And I wouldn't ever think that you would bother anybody by calling them up or texting them and saying, Pray for me right now. You don't have to go into a long list. It may be too embarrassing for you to put what you want prayer for. And that's not what it's about. Right, Miss Gwen? This is about pray for me. You're calling on one of God's army to help you fight against the army that's surrounding you. So I would encourage you, don't say, well, I just don't want to bother nobody. You know, I, I don't get that. When I'm going through something, I want somebody praying for me. So don't, don't feel bad. Find a brother or sister that you have confidence in and just call them up or text them and say, pray for me right now. And God will help them surround the surrounding army. Amen? Let's stand together, please. Heavenly Father, I love you this morning. God, you are so wonderful. You are so mighty. You are so powerful. You are greater, dear God, than any problem, any addiction, anything that's going on in our lives, dear God. You're greater than that. Lord, help us to realize it. Help Lord, our spiritual eyes to be opened and see, Lord, your angels surrounding the surrounding army. Oh, God, I pray for these, my brothers and sisters, this morning. I started out, Lord, thinking about those I've talked to of late and how they've talked about, Lord, the oppression and oppression that seems to be upon all of our world. Lord, so I pray, Lord, for these folks today standing here within the sound of my voice and those that have called in as well. Oh, God, deliver them from their army. Not, Lord, let them just make it through, but, Lord, deliver them from their army, whatever it is, dear Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Lord, may you come, dear Lord, and bring them peace in their heart. Lord, they can face each new day, dear God. They can face each new enemy, each new stronghold with the power of the living God. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless your hearts this morning.